Welcome to this CS320 lecture on finite automata. Now this is where this class gets really fun because we get to design these machines that help us define languages. So finite automata is another way that we can define a language. And it works like this. It's made up of these circles that we call states. So in this case, we have three states. One of the states is marked as the start state. So to mark a state as the start state, you usually either have an arrow pointing to it, or what we mostly will do is just put a hyphen or a dash inside of the state. So this is the start state. And then we can have one or more final states. And those final states are marked with a plus sign. So this is the only final state. Now in this case, there's only one, but you can have as many uh, final states as you want if you're creating your own finite automata. And the way it works is we uh, start in the start state, and as we read letters off of our word, we move from that state following the edge that contains the letter we read to the next state. So you can see that we're in this state right here because it's the start state. When we read an A, that causes us to move this to this state. Then we read another A and we're back in this state. And then another A, we're back in this state. Another A right here, then we read one B. And then we read another B, then we read an A, and then we read a B. So no matter what our input word is, and this is the input word right here, we are going to land, uh, after we've read all of the letters of the input word, we're gonna finish in one of the states. If the state we finish in happens to be a final state, then the word is in our language. If we happen to finish in one of these states, then that means the word is not in our language, and these two states are not final states. Now they could be, if we wanted to, we could just put a plus inside of there and make them final states, but that would mean that the finite automata uh, defines a different language. Now we usually call these language recognizers. Regular expressions that we learned in the previous lecture were kind of ways to generate words in the language, whereas finite automatas uh, work more by, okay, we have a word, and here is a nice, easy test to see if the word is in the language. So as you can see, when I um, followed this, now you, you'll have to follow along with these letters, but you can see that we have four A's to begin, and that will go A, 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 A. So after we've read all four of these A's, we'll end up in this state. Then we see one B, so now we're in that state. And then we go B, the second B, and A, and another B, and we end up in the final state. So this is a word in this finite automata's language. So now let's try some other words to see if they're in the language or not. First, the null word. Now the null word doesn't have any letters in it, so we end up in the start state. And the start state is not a final state, at least in this finite automata. You could make it a final state if you wanted to, but in this case it isn't. So that means that the null word is not in our language because we read all the letters and we didn't end up in a final state. Now let's try this word. So we're gonna read an A, a B, and then two A's which means that we end up in this state right here, and that means this is a word in our language. So the, the first one is, and this one as well is a word in our language. Now let's try um, this word, which is just a B and an A. So we'll start here, we'll read a B, and then have our A and end up in a final state. So it, that this word is also a word in our language, now what about three A's? Is three A's in our language? Let's try it out. We go A, 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 and we end up in this state to, after we've read all three A's. That is not a final state, so this is also not a word in our language. 
So what is this language? What is the language of this finite automata? Well, all we need to do is read a B. And if we read a B, notice up here, no matter what, we've only read A's. But as soon as we read one B, we go down to this final state. Once we're in the final state, there's no leaving the final state. We're always going to go back to the same state every time. So I like to call this, uh, at, this is kind of the judgment day. Once we land in heaven, we get to stay in heaven for the rest, no matter what. So we did what what's right. We found a B, and that means the word is in the language. So the language, if we were to say an English uh, description of this language, it would be all words with at least one B. Now, once again, just like with regular expressions in this language, what we're going to have to do is uh, one, when we're given a finite automata, we're going to have to analyze it and be able to somehow describe what language this finite automata accepts. We'll also go backwards. Um, we'll take a description of a language and we'll generate a finite automata that accepts this language. So let's look at this finite automata. What language is it? Well, there's only one state. It's the start state. And it also has a final state marker inside of it. So um, no matter what, we're going to stay inside of this state. So this uh, language is all words. OK, let's try some others. What if this finite automata didn't have any uh, end state marker right there? Well, then in that case, it would be no words at all or the empty language. So now let's start with a regular expression and see if we can create a finite automata that accepts the same language. So in this case, we have to have one A followed by whatever word we want. So this is all words that begin with an A. And how we might do that is, and by the way, there's more than one way to create a finite automata for a language. We can um, have a start state. And now we're going to look at the very first letter in the word. And if that first letter is an A, then the word's in our language. If it's a B, then it's not. So we'll make this decision. If we get an A, we've met all the requirements for this language. So we'll just go to a final state. And no matter what comes after it, an A or a B, uh, we just keep reading letters, and as soon as we've read all the letters, we'll be in this final state. So if we read a B to begin with, now we know this word cannot be a word in the language because it started with a B, not an A. And what we'll do is we'll just loop through all the rest of the letters in the word, and then we'll end up in this state, and I call this state kind of like an outer darkness state, we've been cast out. There's no getting out of that state. Now let's try a little harder example. We'll try to create a finite automata that accepts all words that contain a triple A. That's the substring of A, A, A. So we'll have our start state. And if we read 1a, we'll go to this state. If we've read 2a's, we'll go to another state. And if we've read 3a's, then we'll go to our final state. Now, once we've met that condition, we've read 3a's in a row. Once we've met that condition, we know that we want to stay in that state. Just read the rest of the letters from the word, and we'll end up in a final state. And um, now what we have to do is we have to worry about our Bs. And run rule with finite automatas that I haven't really mentioned yet is that each and every state needs at least an A and a B edge going out of it. 
we can't have a state, and if we see a letter that say we see a B, and we're, we're in this state and we see a B, and we're like, uh, there's no edge to follow. That cannot happen in a finite automata. We have to know where we're going to go for each letter in our alphabet. So when we're using A's and B's, that's pretty easy. If we were using, say, the full English alphabet and had a finite automata, every state would have to have an A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the way to Z edge leaving it. So it's nice that we're using A's and B's. That means that every state has to have two edges leaving it. So what do we do if we have a B in our first state? Well, I haven't seen any A's, so I'll just loop back to the start state and um, and look. hope the next letter is an A. Now what about in this state right here? If I see a B, well that means I've seen zero A's in a row. And each one of these states could have a little bit of meaning. In this state right here, if we means that we've seen one A in a row. This state means I've seen two A's in a row. And this state means that I've either seen, just seen three A's in a row, or I've seen three A's in a row in this word before, so I know I want to accept it. So whenever we read a B, we'll just go back to the start state. And whenever we read a B, we'll just go back to the start state, which means that we've seen zero A's in a row. And that is how we can get a finite automata that accepts all words that contain a triple A. If you notice, once we read a B in this state, we stay in the final state because we've already seen three A's in a row. Now, there are a lot more examples in the book that you should definitely look at, but we'll look at one last example in this lecture. This is the start state and the final state. Now, if you notice, if we read an A, we're going to move from this side of our finite automata over to this side. And that doesn't matter whether in this state or this state. When we read one A, we're going to be stuck on this side. If we read another A, we're going to move back to the left side of the finite automata. So one A, two A's, three A's, four A's, five A's, six A's. Each time we read an A, whenever we're on this side of our finite automata, we've read an odd number of A's. When we're on this side of the finite automata, we've read an even number of A's. The same thing works for the top to bottom. If we, we'll start here and that will be an even number of B's, odd, even, odd. If we read one A, we could jump over here, but we still have an odd number of B's and an odd number of A's. Read another A, we can jump back. Read another B and we can jump back to this state right there. So the only state, if we, after we've read all the letters of our word, if we end up in this state, that means we've read an even number of A's and an even number of B's. So they call this language even, even. Thanks for watching this lecture.